So today you're going to meet a world-class expert who's going to share some small strategies that will make a big impact on student learning. So during our time together, we're going to focus on supporting early literacy with expert Dr. Adria Klein. Uh, Dr. Klein will share three strategies, and for each of those strategies, we are going to send you with brand new Seesaw lessons, which are ready-to-go activities right in Seesaw that you can use in your classroom tomorrow um, to support these strategies. So a couple of housekeeping items just before we begin. This session is being recorded, and a link to the recording will be shared in a follow-up email Give us 24 to 48 hours to get you that email um, after the session is complete. If you have questions during this session, we would love to answer them for you. We have some people in our back channel that are super excited to answer those questions. And if it's in a question um, that's appropriate for Dr. Klein, we will make sure that we give her some time to answer that as well. Those questions should go in the Q&A. Um, when you put them in the Q&A, it ensures that we won't miss them. And it also allows us to see which questions were answered. And if any questions go unanswered during this time, we can reach out to you with the answers after this webinar is concluded. Um, other comments or ideas, uh, reactions can be put in the chat so that all participants can view them. So to start, uh, my name is Tracy Purdy, and I am the Training and Professional Development Manager here at Seesaw. Um, I'm a former fourth grade and sixth grade teacher, so I have had um, a lot to learn from Dr. Klein during this time that we've been working with her um, about early literacy. I'm very excited to be joining with you today. I am joining you from the Minneapolis area, and I'm here with my uh, colleague Mia. I'll turn it over to her to introduce herself. Hello everyone, my name is Mia. I am the Training and Professional Development Specialist here at Seesaw. I'm so excited to be here with you as well. I am a former kindergarten teacher. So early literacy is a passion of mine. So I'm so excited for Dr. Klein to share all of these amazing strategies with you. And I am based in the Chicago area. Fantastic. And now let's meet our expert. Uh, Dr. Adria Klein is the trainer and director of comprehensive literacy of the Comprehensive Literacy Center at St. Mary's College of California and Professor Emerita of Reading Education at CSU San Bernardino, where she was the chair of the Department of Elementary and Bilingual Education. A former president of the California Reading Association, Association she also served on the International Literary Association Board of Directors. She earned her PhD at the University of New Mexico in reading and ESL. Dr. Klein is the co-author of many professional books and articles on reading intervention, multi-literacy learning, and early mathematics instruction. She obviously has a wealth of knowledge and experience to share with us today, and we are so excited to have you. Uh, welcome, Dr. Klein. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here talking about early literacy. When we think about strategies in young children, there's so many factors that we can work on. We can work on what we call items and we can work on strategies and we have to work on both. So bringing that together, our goal is to talk about early literacy strategies that impact learning. I'm delighted to be partnering with Seesaw in their efforts to bring early literacy to teachers, to families around the world. And that's going to be our focus and what I hope will be a, a busy but flying by time together. Because from all the places you say you are, I know time zones quite well. That's part of my early math. And I realize how many different times of day and tomorrow many of you are in right now. So thank you for joining us. As we think about early literacy, uh, put together an idea about what the brain does when we read. And so many people are talking about brain research and neuroscience, and they're saying this side of the brain lights up or that side of the brain lights up when we read. Actually, both sides of the brain light up. And when we think about that brain lighting up, sometimes they're thinking about words and sounds and how they sound from oral language but that is foundational, that early talk that has maybe not been as possible in the last few years of the different types of constraints we've had on being together. But talking with our children, allowing them time to interact, time to talk, time even in my third grade last year was in breakout rooms. And from the idea that I trusted the children as I helped them with anchor charts, 
to understand how what they talked about was foundational to what they read. This is true in preschool where I taught in Los Angeles. And so when we think about the speaker and listener, as I said, both sides of the brain are lighting up. Let's think about speaking and listening and consider that's the early neural networks that form in our brain. Young children cry a bit, they're hungry, they're tired, they want to eat, they need a diaper change, and the speaker, the young child, is with sounds about what's and needs. And then the listener, the caregiver, the parent, the teacher, is helping to support that. That builds the early networks that keeps growing as children are speaking and listening to each other. So one thing we always did in preschool and early literacy was allow the opportunity for play and talk to go on. I think about early writing and how oftentimes we say as an adult, I like it quiet right now. But from the standpoint of where we are, the talk that accompanies writing in the classroom is really helpful. So we'll pause on this slide just a minute and think about what makes talk visible. In any language, in any symbol system, even with languages that were not written down but only transliterated more recently, what we're doing when we talk and then work in reading and writing is we're mapping our language onto the printed page. As Mari Clay from New Zealand said, we're making talk visible in the symbols, letters that are on the page. So early sound learning, early literacy learning is really about that talk they've been surrounded by hopefully in family and caregiver and community and preschool and early K that now has to be mapped onto the page. We know from the research that the less opportunity to talk is clearly tied some to many children's difficulty in early literacy development. And so that is the idea that talk, as simple as we say, talk written down, as many Van Allen said, reading is talk written down, a very old phrase from an Arizona researcher to think about mapping our language onto the printed page, making talk visible. And there's delight. As my, sec my grandson said, when he was only two, we were walking where he lives in Northern California and we were on our way to a restaurant. And he went, grandma, there's my name. And I looked up at the restaurant name and I knew it wasn't his name, but it started with an M and his name starts with an M. And he knew the sound of M because he'd been called by his name so many times. And I said, yes, Max, there's your M. And that's how he, sure he didn't have the whole word. Sure he didn't know all the letters. He didn't even know the letter name, but he began to be familiar with it from oral language. And then he saw the printed symbol that's making talk visible. And so then when we think about what we need to do, it isn't just the talk, it isn't just making print visible, but that whole convention of print, whether it's top to bottom in Korean and Japanese, if it's left to right, if it's right to left, if there's spaces between words. I had the privilege of teaching in Hungary, for example. My Hungarian is extremely limited, but from the standpoint that adjectives and adverbs are added on to the end of words, and that makes some words 28 letters long without a space in them. When you think about that and you go, oh my goodness, but because of print concepts, thinking about the nature of directionality, return sweeps, the use of punctuation, all of that is part of being aware of print. So one of the problems is sometimes too much isolation work on letters and sounds and words without the idea of movement, even across a single word, limits some of the application of concepts about print as we read. So it all has to happen at once. It's amazing that it happens. So we're going to think about three strategies, three steps, and as we consider where we're moving to next and all the ideas, let's get started with those. I pull a page from Simon Sinek, and many of you know of his work in business and community leadership. Knowing our why, is at the center of the theory and research I've been talking about for these first few minutes. Knowing our how is what we as educators, as caregivers, as parents, as families, as community folks, knowing what to do and with what 
So it all comes together. The why has to be at the center. It looks like a bit of a yolk of an egg, if you want to think about it. It's where everything grows. And then as it spreads out, we need to know more about our why, how and our why. It works in business and colleagues and friends. It works in learning to read, knowing your why, understanding how to do it, and then finding the best resources. Your what is part of the teamwork we do.